Yo, what's good, YouTube? All right, guys. Today's video. All right, I wanted to. I've been working on trying to find a build that was really close to the Nova Guard from ME3. All you Mass Effect 3 fans, I know you guys know about the Nova Guard and how beast it was. He was super powerful. Um, in this game, it's he's you know different. You can't really Nova Guard like you're used to. And one of the reasons is because the double Nova in ME3, your first initial Nova never drained any of your shields. It was the ones after that. With this game, the if you go double Nova, the first initial Nova starts taking down your shields. All right. So I know a lot of people have been having problems and issues with that um, because you you know you tend to go down a lot more with a double Nova if you don't know how to use it. Um, so I was wanting to kind of create a build that was as close as possible to it. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and get right into the build and I'll explain to you guys why I chose the things that I did. Now, for the Vanguard, for rank 4 for charge, I went for radius, alright? Um, this is going to damage enemies within a radius at the end point of the charge. This is very good to stagger multiple enemies in a group. Um, the whole point of the Nova Guard is to basically clear out mobs as fast as possible. Um, groups of trash mobs, just anything like that, just be able to wipe out the field a lot, you know, at a quick pace. Um, this is why I go for radius. Now, if you go for damage and force, it's not bad, but the thing is, you're not going to stagger enemies that are around the enemy that you're hitting. Okay? Um, so you got to be careful about that because with this type of build, you want that stagger because that's going to give you, you know, an extra second or two without taking any damage because they're not going to be shooting at you because they're going to be staggered. So I would definitely highly recommend radius, but damage and force is good as well. Now, for rank five, this is going to be a straight power build, all right? Um, I definitely go recommends power synergy. This is going to enhance all your powers for five seconds after charging. It gives you a power damage and a power force bonus of 25%, which is very, very nice. Rank six, I'll go for shock trooper. Now, you're probably wondering why I don't go bastion. Bastion is very good, but I just don't, I like having the faster recharge speed for the charge. It's going to allow you, even though you only regain over half of your shields, um, I just feel like it's way better. It's more beneficial, guys. Bastion, for survivability, if I was rocking a Crow Guard, I would go with Bastion, but because of how fast the Human Vanguard is, I definitely recommend Shock Trooper. You guys should definitely give it a shot. Now for Nova, rank four, go for damage and force. I wouldn't go Radius. You wanna to try to pump out as much damage. Nova's gonna be your main damage dealer. Gives you plus 35% damage and plus 30% force. Definitely the way to go for this type of build. Now for rank five, I go for anti-armor. Anti-shield isn't necessary. You can still thrash shields really, really quick with this guy. Anti-armor, you wanna be able to drop down the saboteurs, the anarchists, do some damage to the hydras and the berserkers um, because you are gonna be seeing me do that in gameplay. I know a lot of people are very iffy. They say, you know, you have to play super safe with the Vanguard. You can't be going in and charging stuff, which is partially correct, but if you're smart about it, you can literally go in and charge a Nova anything. It doesn't even matter what it is. You just have to be very careful. I would, if you're going against a Hydra with this type of guy, you either, if you're hitting him from the front, I would go in, charge Nova, okay, back away, and you can either start shooting him with your weapon, or you can go in for a charge on another Nova. You don't want to sit there and Nova for too long, though, because what's going to happen is that Hydra is probably going to pick you up and insta-kill you, so that's going to help with your survivability, so just a little tip for you guys. Now, for rank six, I go for shield-powered. A lot of people or against Double Nova. Um, some people like it. I personally like Double Nova. Not because of the fact that you can keep using over and over again because it does drain your shields. You just have to be very, very smart about it. Double Nova is nice because every time you charge, your charge is gonna go up very, very quick, especially if you go rank six with the plus 75% recharge speed. Your charge is gonna cool down very quickly. Do having Double Nova is nice because of the fact that you're always gonna have your Nova. You're never gonna have to wait on your Nova to cool down which is why I recommend Shield Power over Seismic Nova. But again, they're both good. The only bad thing I don't like about Seismic Nova is because of the fact that whenever you Nova, smaller enemies, they tend to get knocked around everywhere, okay, away from you. I like trying to keep my mobs as close together as possible so I can wipe numerous enemies out, you know, with one or two Novas. And now for Shockwave, it's a great ability, but I've only got one point in it. I it's great. I'm not going to knock this ability at all with a Nova Guard. I don't really use Shockwave too much. Now, the good thing about Shockwave, guys, is the fact that whenever you're sitting there, you can prime enemies and Shockwave will set off combos. 
it is great ability. For rank six, you get really good damage versus armor. It gives you plus 75%. Now, if you wanted to go Shockwave and replace, let's say Nova. Let's say you don't want to go double Nova and you just want to go charge a Shockwave. What I would recommend, how I would recommend specking it out would definitely be damage and force. Radius isn't bad. You're going to hit multiple enemies, but I like going straight damage because that's going to stack with the anti-armor rank six. And then rank five, definitely go for reach over recharge speed. The reason for that is you want your shockwave whenever you put reach on it, it increases the maximum distance by 50%. It actually goes pretty, pretty far. So you can actually combo from a really farther distance if you need to, especially if you're using an assault rifle and you're priming enemies from range, you're definitely going to want the reach on the shockwave. So again, guys, quickly going over it. If you were specking in the shockwave, how I would go about it is I would go rank four damage and force, rank five reach, rank six anti-armor. That's just my personal preference. But with the Nova Guard, I've only got one point. I don't feel like it's necessary to put points in Shockwave because you're definitely going to want six points in Barrier and six points in Apex Training. That's just the way, you know, that's just how I recommend it. Now for Apex Training, rank four, go for Power Augmentation. They did buff up powers in the patch. The power is going to be a lot stronger. They do hit harder. You're definitely going to want to get that plus 20% power damage. Rank five, I go for Ammo and Targeting. Recommend that, no doubt, over the Aerial Combat Training. It's just going to give you a little bit extra weapon damage you know, by 20% and give you some extra spare ammo by 25%, you know, never a bad thing. Rank six, I go for power specialist. Gives you plus 15% power damage, plus 30% power force, and also gives you a plus 20% weapon weight capacity. So gives you more variety of weapons you can use with this guy. Barrier, rank four, go for unyielding barrier. Gives you plus 30% max shields. Highly recommend this over recuperative barrier because if you're playing with the Nova Guard, the way that I play with them, I play very, very fast and aggressive. This doesn't, you don't get enough time for your health and shield regeneration to kick in. So you're definitely going to want max shield so your shield just don't get dropped really, really quickly. Because if you don't go unyielding barrier, you will know that your shields are going to drop very fast. Okay, so just be wary about that. Rank 5, I go for Biotic Alacrity. I would recommend this over barrier drain. I don't sit there and just go in and charge and start meleeing shit with this guy. I know a lot of people do, which is fine, but I personally don't like that crap. Um, now for this, it's also going to give you another plus 10% weapon weight capacity, again, which is going to be nice, allow you to use heavier weapons. It also gives you plus 10% botic power shield re cost reduction. Now, that's not a big factor, okay? With the double Nova, it does take a lot of your shields. The shield cost reduction doesn't really matter, all right? And, but you also get plus 15% movement speed while shields are active, so you can sit there charge. It just makes the character very, very fast to move around the map. Rank 6. I tried active barrier, it wasn't bad, but I would definitely recommend saving barrier. This is going to be a lifesaver, it's going to help with your survivability. This automatically restores shields upon reaching low health on a cooldown. Whenever you go down to about 20% health, once every 15 seconds, your shields are going to fully restore to 100%. There's been numerous times when you're fighting, you know, groups of berserkers, if you're going against, you know nullifiers and destroyers anything like that this is definitely coming in clutch for me and definitely helped me so highly recommend it overactive barrier i think you guys will like it a lot better but this is just what i decided to go with and this is just works best for me now for my loadout guys i am using the dawn okay this guy you can use any type of weapon whenever people sit there and try to clown on vanguard using snipers i've done it just to do it because people were talking noise about it and it's actually a lot of fun if you sit there throw a black widow on this guy and you just start going in charging snapshotting <laughs> I mean you can just tear shit up it's a lot of fun you know it's not the recommended way but it's a fun way you can still be very effective in gold matches doing it that but the dawn is very nice I wanted to with this build back in Mass Effect 3 I used to run the Nova Guard with the Claymore so the dawn got a buff on the patch as well very strong very reliable people sit there and will talk shit about you know the aiming is bad on it and stuff man it's still a fun powerful gun to use you can use this gun on any build and just thrash with it the gun right now i do have it at rank nine it's got over 1200 damage just and i don't even have any weapon passes on this guy so having really strong powers we're on a power guy and then having the dawn which has really really high weapon damage it just kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So you could sit there, charge into an enemy, pop them with the Dawn, 
finish them off with a Nova, or you can go in Nova, charge, hit them with the Dawn, Nova again. I mean, you could do a bunch of different things with this guy, but the Dawn is a lot of fun, man. You guys know this is my main weapon. If you don't have the Dawn and you want to use something else, you could go with any type of pistols because since this is a power build, I mean, you can just sit there and just literally rock out. You're not going to be using your weapon too much, but there are going to be occasions where if you're sitting there, you don't want to, when you had to pick and choose where you charge a Nova, you don't want to sit there and go into groups of enemies um, and just get yourself killed. Like I said, this would probably take a little bit of practice, but it's super fun, very, very fast build. You're going to want to use your weapon at times, okay? So you want to go with some sort of powerful weapon or... I mean, if anything, you could seriously just go around with the Predator and kind of play a little bit passive until you get some bosses low down to health and then just go in and charge with the Nova. I mean, you can do anything with this guy, man. I mean, it doesn't really matter what weapon you use. He's just a beast overall. A lot of fun to play with. Now, for consumables, what I, the two that I highly recommend, okay, if you're going with a gun such as the Dawn, for example, with this guy, I always run a Cyclonic mod. And then I'll always run a Botic Power Amp. This is just going to intensify the damage of your power. So you'll be able to either clean up with the Dawn or finish enemies off when they have higher health with your powers because they're going to be hitting a lot harder. Now, if you're using guns such as the Hurricane or anything that's going to prime, like the Paw or just whatever in general, I would highly recommend going to Cyclonic Mod and an Ammo Type because you're going to, your charge is going to be able to trigger combos. So is your Shockwave. I mean, it's just, it's a really fun, you know, layout to go with. So again, guys, quick, you know, recap, two mods, if you're running shotguns, um, slow priming weapons, you're not really going to be focusing on priming, go for a cyclonic mod and a botic power amp. If you're running a hurricane or an equalizer, ghost, any Paul, even the shadow, whatever, something that's going to prime pretty quickly, I would go with a cyclonic mod along with an ammo type of some sort. But that's going to conclude the build video, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a thumbs up. I appreciate all the support. The channel's growing. Let's get this shit going. I couldn't be doing this without you. Um, if you want to stay tuned for more build videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button for me. I greatly appreciate it. I hope everybody has a great day. Enjoy the gameplay and stay blessed. Peace.